cultural desert. That's how Brisbane has been described, a cultural desert. And I don't know about you, but I love living in Brisbane, and I don't want to see it described as a cultural desert. But I do agree that there are some things we do need to improve about Brisbane, and there are some things that we can bring to Brisbane and to make it more a rich, vibrant, cultural, fun place to be in. And I think we're the ones to do it. You know, we can't expect anyone else to do that for us because we are our city. So, oh, my click is not working. <laughs> Sorry about that. So, the first place I think we should look at is public space because public space is for everybody. And public space is the highlight of our city. It's where all these cultural and civic functions happen. And the uh, a public space that we've forgotten about is, are the streets. Our streets are public spaces. We all own those together. And in these public spaces, we can do many things. Uh, Reba, an arts collective in San Francisco, a few years ago, uh, started creating parks in these public spaces and to get people to rethink how we're actually using that space. Do we want it used for one person for four hours in their car that's just left there? Or do we want it used for something else? So as you can see, these became quite popular and they, they then grew and they happened all over the world, um, including Brisbane. Next slide, please. <laughs> So in Brisbane, it's actually been quite popular. Um, seems to be working now. Uh, we've had over 60 in 2010 created by people of, of all walks of life and in all kind of crazy ways. We've, we've had people, uh, you know, knit, knit in a park um, in these car spaces because these are public spaces, these are our spaces, and these are how people want to contribute to those. We had a pool set up by BVN Architecture. So there's lots of ways that we can activate our public space and make it our own, such as knit bombing, pumpkin bombing, uh, seed bombing, uh, chair bombing. And chair bombing is particularly interesting. You know, isn't it logical that if we need a place to sit, that we should then put a seat in? You know, we shouldn't have to leave it up to other people to tell us where to sit. And New York's done something very interesting recently where they've turned Times Square and a lot of the streets around there into public space and taken away the cars. And they've put in temporary seating. And people, the first thing people think of is, oh my goodness, everyone's going to steal these seats. But they don't get stolen. And if they do, they probably cost $7. So it's no big deal. But there's enough people around to watch them, and there's enough butts on seats that no one can actually take them. Um, and they mean that we can move them around, and it means that we have control over our environment, and we can manipulate our environment and our city. And you know, it means that we can move into the shade if it's, if it's too sunny, we can move into the heat if it's too cold. Um, and it's just a great way to, to live our city. We, events can start off small uh, that people have started. This one started off with a, a number of people who each day would, uh, in a, on a day each year, would set up tables, dress in white, come together, bring china and start meals. So it started off as a guerrilla event and then it became something much bigger. Now they have to cap the amount of people that can come to this. This is in Paris, it's the Nain Blanc. Um, and it happens all over the world in New York now. So people turn up on their own with their own you know, white dresses and their white clothes, they come with their own tables, they come with their own china, they come with their own food, and they, uh, they set it up, and it's quite a spectacular thing to happen. Wouldn't it be great uh, for you to just wander around and see these things that are happening in your city? Um, and they don't even tell these people that it's where it's going to be held until a few days before it's even being held. So that some people are so excited about this, and it makes their city so vibrant and fun. And, and it's a good thing, fun, a city should be fun. They should be silly, they should be fun. So there's Red Swing Project who are putting swings in spaces all over the cities that aren't necessarily just playgrounds. So we have the Riverside Expressway in Brisbane, maybe we need some swings under there. And, and they shouldn't just be for, for young, young children, they should be for everybody to, to swing and have fun in our city. And our city can also be silly and a little bit out there. And it's something that we can all participate in. And this photo made it to the Zombie Walk, Brisbane Zombie Walk website, and I don't know who took it off me, but it's there, it's the first slide. Um, but in Brisbane, we're breaking records for this event because our city should be contributed by us and it should be fun. So I, I like to walk the talk. 
Uh, this is my event that I set up um, in a public space. And public spaces, like I said, can be used by everybody. But sometimes we don't all talk to each other and, and, and actually integrate with different people. So I decided board games were a way to do this. And so my event has giant board games and normal-sized board games in King George Square to encourage interactions of people of different generations and different backgrounds and different cultures. And this happens once a month, and it, it does it. We, we get people of, from all walks of life coming to, to join in. You know, afterwards I have homeless people who come up and thank me. I have, there are lawyers who, you know, will be playing someone who they've never even met before, and strangers are talking, and, and people of different generations, you know, people cheating on the Scrabble. They, the giant Scrabble's a little bit open, and so you have a young kid playing Scrabble, and an older man comes up behind him and goes, hey, you can play this word. Um, and it's great to see those interactions um, in society, and it just sort of brings everyone together. Uh, another event in Brisbane is Lazy Sunday Cycle. Um, so it's another one that activates our space and brings people together. We have sort of an oversaturation of cyclists that are wearing Lycra and, and Speed Cycle. That's fine. I'm okay with that. But what we're missing is cycling for fun. Cycling can be fun. And cycle can be relax cycling can be relaxing. And people who haven't cycled in 25 years need somewhere that they can, they can just cycle with a group of people. They can meet new friends um, and make our city a bit more vibrant. You know, get some funky bikes out there and, and maybe even some costumes and uh, be yourself in your city and make it a better place. Conversations are really important in our city. And Yen here today started a, uh, an activity where she set up priority seating on public transport that was for conversation. So if you were sitting there, then you, know, you knew that, that someone else might start a conversation with you. And that's important because that makes our city a better place. Suitcase rummage is another one that's a Brisbane invention by Danielle and Isabel. And uh, people just come with their suitcases filled with wares to sell. And I think it's great. And people can start ideas like this. So Danielle and Isabel had this idea. They told people about it, and they made it happen. And that's what you can do as well. So our city in May 2012 has a festival about this sort of stuff, where you can come and activate your city with your ideas. So you can come and talk to people that are organizing this event and get help with it. But you can just do it. You, know, there's, you don't have to ask anyone's permission to, to do something in your city. You don't have to ask someone's permission to put a seat somewhere. Yes, council might not be happy, but say sorry. You know, just ask for forgiveness. You don't have to ask permission, and you never know where it can go. It can continue to something bigger. You know, parking day, we don't ask permission to do that. But it happens, and if we get in trouble, we ask forgiveness, we say sorry, and move on. But, you know, it just gets bigger and bigger over time. And then one day, you never know, we might get permission to do that, and it might become, our city might become a better place. So I really think we want our city to be vibrant. We want our city to be cultural. And every city, this can be applied to but you're the ones that have to do it. No one else is going to do it for you. So if you want your city to be a particular way, you're the ones that are in charge and you have to do it. So let's make our city a cultural jungle rather than a cultural desert. And um, I would love to see this happen. And there's some great speakers here today who you can see are doing some great things in our city. So thank you.